Hello and welcome back to Tyranny. What do you want? I've already faced enough torments at the hands of these scholars. The bound prisoner squints up at you and licks his dry lips. Y you're the known Feybinder, aren't you? I recognize you anywhere. You're the one responsible for muzzling those troublesome sages. That decision was a stroke of genius. <laughs> Not only did you keep the sages under control, you hampered the censors' efforts to explore the library. If they can talk to the sages, they're not going to get a lot of help out of them. But I'm afraid you have me at disadvantage right now. I am at your mercy. You have no idea how tempting that is. You must be Merrick. Ash has tasked me with destroying the library, so I need your help to get past the course. Merrick looks dismayed. So, Graven Ash sent someone to finish what I couldn't do. I knew I had failed my mission, but I didn't know I wasn't going to be given a chance to redeem myself. So be it. There is no point in mourning what I cannot change. As for your problem, I wish I could help you, Vatebinder. But at present, I can't even help myself. Marik looks down at his strings. What happened to you? My scouts and I were infiltrating the burning library. One of my best, Yelena, must have been working with the Scarlet Chorus. She disappeared, and shortly after we were hunted down. He sends a bloody glob of spit to the ground. She used her off-bound connection against us. That's how the course was able to pin down our location. Damn clever. I don't know how many of us were taken, but these sages caught me while I was resting. Suppose I should feel grateful? Now I just await my execution. Unless you're willing to help me. Set me free and we can talk more. That would be a real favor. And if you were worried about the muscle around camp, the rest of my skulls are nearby. They can help us fight off the sage scum. Really? The sage is already dead. You're free. Mari has been joined by members of his unit. Two weary looking oaf bound with large patches of ash and blood blanketing their armor. They nod to their commander as they approach. A curiously nonchalant reaction to his rescue. Marik appears to regain some strength at the sight of his men. He beckons vigorously as he approach, the determined expression visible on his face. Thank you for your help, Fatebinder. I will forever be in debt to you for helping me avoid, to avoid the shame of uh, this honorable death on top of my other failure. I am afraid I must ask more, ask more of you, even after you have already done more for me than I can repay. First you will help me. I need to get to the library. I will tell you everything I know. I only ask you to do, I only ask you do something for me once you make it to the library. Graven Ash tasked me and my group with destroying it. Unfortunately, we were discovered and routed, but I know how to get you there safely. Here, let me mark on your map how to bypass all the course patrols to get to the library. Once there, you need to only deal with the sensor to get inside. Be aware, Fatebinder. One of my soldiers mentioned a large magical barricade deep inside the library. The sensor has her gang searching the entire building for parts of some kind of passcode to get beyond it. If you are going to accomplish your goal, you will need to find the passcode before they do. Now I will have more information for you, but I hope that will help you. He salutes you. Now, I would make my request of you. Wait, wait, wait. Can you tell me anything about the edict first? Unfortunately not. All I know is that all the forbidden lore in the library must be destroyed. Raven Ash believes that destroying the Silent Archive will achieve it, but the, with the barrier protecting it, no one can get to it. At least it seems no one has gotten in yet. Otherwise the edict would have ended. What is your request? Some of my oathbound scouts are still missing. Two are in the burning library, and the third, Yelena, is in the Scarlet Cross camp. I want to see her properly punished and her for her betrayal, as much as I want to see the others safe. Tell me about this betrayal. She used her oathbound connection against us. That's how the course was able to pin down our location. 
No, anything else? You're repeating yourself. You mentioned an outbound connection. What is that? Because you help me, I'll tell you. But normally this knowledge is not sure outside that is favored. Before you are truly an outbound, you must complete a ritual that connects you to each one of your brothers. Their feelings become yours, their pains and are your pains, and their troubles are yours as well. Yelena used that connection to betray us. She must be made to pay for the act. What do you want me to do? I ask of you to find my missing men and return them to me. Yelena must be made to pay for her crimes and I will not have another of my men lost to her weak will. You're lucky I have business there as well. I will look for you offbound. Take your fate, Binder. I am in your debt. I will not hide the fact that without your help I would have failed in my mission. Your name will be praised as long as I can draw breath. I will await your return here. Okay, but you will have to wait some time. Because we're going back to the court. Wherever that was. Definitely not here. I think it was somewhere here. Bastard Swoon. No. Um, Bastard City? Yes. You make out a few figures on the road well ahead of you. The glint of iron and bronze marks them as well armed and armored. Two feature the broad shoulders of beastmen who alert and lead a heavily laden cart. Uh, as they near, you realize that the standard flown from their cart was the Hurley of Tunon, the Adjudicator, Archon of Justice. They hail you as you approach. You recognize a woman who leads the procession as a minor functionary in Tunon's service by the name of Alma. Her clothes bear the red, black and gold of the court, and she keeps her light brown hair in a carefully braided bun atop her head. Fate by Narevna, she greets you with a bow. I travel in the Arkan service. The card behind me is laid on supplies, all, the reason, uh, all at the reasonable price. Is there anything I can provide you? Sure. Alma grins. Of course, let me show you what I have. She pulls the cover off her card with a flourish. I really don't need anything from you. Yep. Oh, 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 oh. We can finally carry this as accessory. Let's sell those stones. I don't think we need them. And we have lots of them. Blue things as well. Actually, sell all of this. And those things as well. Oh. Oh. oh mm, 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 mm. I don't want to sell this. These yellow ones. For sure. And when it comes to that bow, I. I've. It's mine. <laughs> I don't want to get rid of it. Dear Fate by the Fna, you display curious empathy for those who name you enemy. I sincerely hope that history remembers it as one of your critical strengths rather than your most dire weakness. Remember always that the overlord favors efficacy over empathy. Where is the fate binder who delivers both? Fate binder, regardless.
my Lord Tunun, I must plead for my innocence in this matter. That will be for the court to decide. The forge bound are my subjects, and I hold them to higher standard. You are the keepers of the iron secret. That cannot be forgotten. Fadebinder, so kind of you to join us. I wonder if you might assist in adjudicating this case. As always, I'm curious to witness your execution of Kairos's law. It would be my pleasure, your honor. Excellent. Smith, offer up your testimony. The forgebound artisan clears his throat. <clears throat> I brought a shiny bubble from a merchant passing through Lithian's crossing, a stone of great beauty and strength. Over time, I shaped it into a mallet for pounding iron. The properties of the stone were incredible. I could swing harder, faster, and without strain. It increased my production of iron weapons tenfold. Until your master grew suspicious and turned you over to me. The bauble you speak of was a touched stone, an artifact known to originate from the old walls, to which all are forbidden to go. The charges is trespass and theft of forbidden artifacts. You may proceed, Fatebinder. Did you know where the touched stone came from? Not at first, the merchant wouldn't reveal his sources, but it didn't take long to put pieces together. You just don't encounter objects of such power anywhere else. When you realized the object's source, did you stop using it? Uh, no, once I had it figured out, every swing of the mallet shamed me something awful, but I knew that I was doing right by Kairos. I was sending his army the best weapons I would ever crafted. I thought that may absolve me. Guess I thought wrong. Did you ever lie about using the mallet? No, that, um, that is... <clears throat> the other smiths were curious about my work, but no one thought to inspect my tools. Since no one asked, I never told them. A lie of omission, then. Just as the fairies in the eyes of Kairos. What if your arcane tool had harmed someone, or yourself? What then would have become of ion production? I, I I don't know, your honor. I'm ready to give my ruling. I trust in your instincts, Feybinder. Make sure that my confidence is not misplaced. Forbidden knowledge is a taboo under Kairos' law. But the smith was ignorant. He should go free. He will be mad. So, I can go? He looks from you to Tino and back again with panic and uncertainty. A shrewd interpretation of Kairos' law, but I cannot deny its validity. Very well. The forged bound may return to his duties, using only the tools of his trade. Is that understood? Uh, yes, your honor, I will return to my labor straight away. I thought someone wanted to speak to us. Kalio. Kalio, Kalio, Kalio. Oh, there he is. But you don't want to talk? Fate binder, you look as if you require my counsel. Eh, nothing apparently. Everyone has a name here and it's really weird to try to speak to them. Evna, I see you've returned to the fold. Your exploits in vengeance well are the matter of some discussion. The fate pattern of Bonus regards you with a discerning eye, and for a moment you feel as if she is trying to peer into the very depths of your mind. What can I do for you? Has anything happened while I was away? Nanovel was dispatched to Sauer to break the stalemate between the locals and the disfavored. He proclaimed Karis' Edict of Stones, shattering the country of wines and end winds unending.
You wrote that you could illuminate the dark corners of turtles. She glanced at you, your cutter, in a private message. Yes, there are things I want to discuss within the hearings of outside ears. I need to speak to the fate biter. Privately. I suppose not every conversation is to be recorded. The sage shuffles away. The hulking man shrugs. As you wish. He takes up a position outside of hearing mage, standing just shy of attention. He a man who smells of our family's beast woman? She scratches her head. Beast woman at work will wait for you humans to finish sacred words. Her hands fall to the floor and she passes to the periphery. A sly smile dimples her left cheek. I confess to no small amount of curiosity. I peek into my share of shadows and sometimes scrounge up a secret. What excites your interest? I would like to discuss the Archons and their forces. Focuses. Entirely understandable given the circumstances. How can I enlighten you? Why are the, are the disfavored so obsessed with their breeding? She chuckles, <laughs> stepping straight to the heart of it, are we? The short answer is given Ash and the entire tribal culture that he martyred himself to defend. That tribalism is clearly part of their strength, if not how they're bound to the arc of war. Of course, such sentiments undermine attempts at occupying the tears. She lowers her voice further. Were it not for fear of the court, I wonder if he would eliminate every last tearsman to establish his version of order. She straightens, crossing her arms. If you want to speak at length about this favor of military f as a f military force, though, I would recommend Fane by the new novel, or Ash himself. Or you could always ask your friend in the bronze shell. <laughs> mm. hmm. That's a lot. I don't think we need to speak right now. Apparently she just wanted to chit chat about stuff that we've been doing, that's the history of the world. <clears throat> oh well. Uh, there is... I think mountain and ocean spire have some stuff for us, so let's go there. Okay, what do you have for me? <laughs> I don't even know who I should ask about that. Or is it the correct spire? So we have seven items to collect. But from who? Sorry, I can't. Fate by Dark Time? Come, take a look. The Dirt Cat Apex local registers an old box at his feet. I got a beastman cup in here. <gasps> I doubt that very much. You step up to the huckster and peer down into the box. It's full of us of the junk, nothing more. Before you can comment, you notice him reaching for your ring belt out of the corner of your eye. He makes a high-pitched squeal that echoes over the expanse of the valley. I didn't mean nothing by it, I promise, I just wanted to see how many rings you had, so I so I could adjust my prices accordingly. Rivos, as your service, I have come into possession of some items that might be of interest. That was very dishonest of you. I'll take a look at your wares, but don't try it again. Ooh. Unfortunately, we won't be... Needing any of that. <laughs> Some throwing weapon would be great. Ah, let's get those. Scrolls. Oh, sorry, sigils. And I think I'll end this part here. 
because my throat has been killing me as of late. So, for now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. I think he will have the item. See you swindle. Bye! Thank you.